Hello guys, I'm really happy that so many of you made to join our pretty unexpected uh, meeting. Uh, traditionally, let me know if you can hear me and see me well. I think uh, you would definitely laugh a lot if you'd see how I was preparing <laughs> for uh, this stream. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Please confirm. Oh, yeah. Uh, forgive if the light or sound is not perfect, because I was kind of... <laughs> now I have a chair on a bed and uh, other difficult constructions, so if someone could observe me from a different angle, that would be very, very, very entertaining. <clears throat> but I would like to start with this thing that is very important for me. Uh, when you travel, when you experience something positive, I always feel like I want to share that with those people that I love. And I want to share my experience because I did enjoy uh, my trip to Berlin and extremely enjoyed the uh, project in which I participate. Luckily, it does not finish uh, in Berlin and it will continue. So, um, and I wanted to invite you. I totally understand it's not like you're in Berlin. Some of you maybe live in Berlin, but I have this feeling like if we have this stream from my hotel room in a very nice um, district of Berlin, we get the feeling, we get the atmosphere. And uh, honestly, at uh, the beginning, I wanted to do it uh, the first day, but you all know that, um, awful thing happened uh, because of Russian terrorists who blew up the uh, dam and I did not feel like I can give you that kind of energy that I want to. Thank you so much. Greetings to all your beautiful country, to UK, to Sweden, uh, to Dallas, uh, to Southern England. <clears throat> and once again, I want to thank you for being my community. You cannot imagine how much I spoke about you <laughs> uh, these days because um, I am so proud that um, like not just you, not just like this is a totally natural community of us, but that you are so caring about my country living far away and thinking about it. Greetings to the Netherlands. And I have, like someone told me, <laughs> that my orange nail polish is actually uh, very um, Dutch. So <laughs> you see, to some extent, this is greetings to Vancouver and uh, Washington. Uh, so thank you so much. I will be happy to answer some of your questions if you have. Uh, of course, I will speak more and I want to record additional videos and greetings to Slovenia, additional video about and Colorado <laughs> and UK and Iceland. Yeah, I spoke a lot about Iceland on my uh, train trip <laughs> and Finland. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And greetings to Berlin, like we are just not that far away, a few kilometers <laughs> away from each other. So I'm sure I want to read all the names of your beautiful towns, oblasts, as you say, but like um, maybe you have some questions. And uh, honestly, um, like when I have always loved traveling and I did not travel really long because of COVID pandemics first. And uh, then I, um, uh, because of my mom and war and also, one important thing, uh, I know that Sp uh, Spencer is at work and Martin has uh, his uh, family um, and important events happening in his life, Like, um, but um, they pop in and they are with us and I'm super grateful for this friendship too. Uh, so thank you so much that I see you and thank you Martin and thank you Spencer because they are doing a lot of other uh, important I cannot, I don't want to say work, but like in our community, and I'm very proud that we have this uh, community. Uh, so when you're traveling, you, I always love traveling, and I actually traveled a lot, like not a lot, a lot, <laughs> but um, so I felt like, <laughs> well, Sasha is not, not in my hotel room, Sasha is in Ukraine. Um, and greetings to Switzerland. And um, 
Oh, honestly, I um, got this feeling, especially today. Today was a little bit easier day. And um, I felt this what vibe, or how do you say, of traveling. And I felt how much I miss it. Uh, like, I was making my photos and also people from Aspen, Germany, Aspen Institute, Germany, a very uh, inspiring team. And I'm speaking about that not because I'm part of the project. This is the case when, like, oh, my God, I'm uh, very interested in what is going on and hopefully we'll have more trips and more ideas today. Mm. Uh, if you like this video and you are with me, like it so it can be more visible. Um, maybe I sound sleepy. God, I'm, do you know why I sound sleepy? Because I'm not like uh, gesturing. Why? Because I have a chair on my bed <laughs> and this construction can uh, ruin very uh, quickly. Also, what's very interesting um is that uh, i was a bit like uh, shopping and eating and i'm wearing this t-shirt with ukrainian flag and i had a lot of emotional moments i will share with you later but what was really interesting everywhere like when i i don't speak german i start speaking uh, uh, english and in the end they always tell me Gracias, ciao, <laughs> gracias, señora. So perhaps I, I kind of look <laughs> Spanish or I just like uh, gesture a lot. I don't know. But anyway, they were all, all people who think that I'm um, like foreign to Germany. They start speaking a little bit German to me. <laughs> Thank you. Italian is also good. But anyway, southern. <laughs> So, but I'm a proud Ukrainian and I was like saying that everywhere, maybe that was even a little bit uh, too much, but greetings to Miami. <clears throat> so I was like, gracias Pablo. <laughs> so I was uh, doing uh, this um, thing. So uh, if you don't have like questions, I will give you first a brief uh, story. Why am I here? <clears throat> maybe I will post more about that, but um, I applied for a project that was launched by Aspen Institute Germany, and I very much respect various Aspen Institutes that are not only in Germany, there is also one in Kiev. And uh, they were talking about the importance of social influencers in times of conflict and war and how they can find dis fight disinformation and um, all of that. And uh, I applied and I got the place and I was very like uh, happy about that because I liked the content and the idea of the project. And we speak a lot and about like various platforms, propaganda techniques that Russia uses, but not only for Ukraine, but globally. And um, we visited uh, the um, German Federal Press Office, which was very interesting how many people work there, 500, like what they do on social media. And honestly, this was a moment uh, that um, I felt like for the first time, like uh, I'm, I'm doing like this uh, content creation because so far I, I've, I've always felt myself like a person who simply updates you. Uh, about the situation in Ukraine and I continuously am grateful for your attention about my country and also um, because of like you care. Yes, I know that the Russian got eaten by a shark like and that these are <laughs> good news, I'm sorry. Um, but uh, a really like bad thing happened and um, I was really emotional when I woke up and I received a couple of your messages. I did not check them like at night, but um, well, the first thing that I do, I read the news. So typically I read the news first and then some of your messages. And I was um, frustrated at the size of this tragedy that is difficult to comprehend. And you have this feeling when, like, this is the first time that I am out of Ukraine. And um, I felt like um, I, can, I would like to do something, but I cannot. And uh, from one point of view, you know, 
uh, like I realized that I could not stop the explosion, but you have this feeling <clears throat> uh, when you leave your country, I can compare at, at war, I can compare this feeling uh, to a feeling when you leave your <clears throat> relative who is ill or a person who needs you and uh, you have to go and uh, you have this like feeling uh, that you don't know what to do and uh, like you want to rush home but you cannot rush home because this will not give everything and then uh, what was important for me to speak on this project too there were lots of news all over the world uh, saying like uh, was it uh, Kiev or was it Moscow or like Kiev and Moscow blame each other it's not Kiev and it's so sad that after a year and more of this war, there are still versions. I do understand that to some extent, neutrality is uh, kind of important. Uh, but um, at the same time, um, but at the same time, it's kind of mm, complicated that uh, they still use lots of mechanisms hiding behind neutrality and trying to say that uh, it might be cave also. Many animals will die, but what is more tragic, there will definitely be, and there are already, uh, human victims. And um, guys, I'm sorry, I'm using my computer from the hotel room. It's not like... Um, the perfect studio if you don't like the quality i'm sorry but like there is nothing that i uh can do <clears throat> and uh the problem is that this neutrality is not normal right now after we have witnessed so many crimes and um we know that like russia changed a law inside uh to not to investigate catastrophes of this type if it causes some danger. It was made uh, irresponsibly and it was made like very visibly. They don't care about that. And uh, also, um, thank you for your support. <laughs> and uh, also, I think that I have recently read like a lot of observations because in Ukrainian Facebook, it's all over, you have seen lots of this uh, photos of uh, a dog, for example, hugging uh, a knee of a rescuer. But we have to realize that on these territories, there are lots of people who are old, who could not leave. And uh, what is worse, uh, some part of the territory uh, is occupied. And we know that Russians do not care about any uh, emergency operations and even about their own um even about their own uh, people so i am sure there are no rescue operations on the left side of uh, the river that is occupied by uh, russians and it's unbelievable like to see all of this uh, photos and uh, this contrast between um normality a normal world and I'm never jealous you don't have to think that I'm like observing I think that's the way it should be uh, but um, <laughs> thank you Martin uh, for leopards yeah I'm looking I will I'm going home only on a leopard so <clears throat> uh, like when you see all of these photos of these people all this dirty water coming into their houses just visualize that and uh, I don't know why, like I'm not very much into animal protection, but I was also thinking about this rabbits and birds in the nests, in the field, and that they uh, will drown. And um, some old gran grannies that are not able to evacuate. Uh, and it's a huge like tragedy because also lots of cultural and natural heritage uh, is devastated. And uh, people... Um, and life continues like, and you see this, this contrast, and I do understand that um, I had an intention, many Ukrainians do that when they travel, uh, to leave my air raid alarm on, uh, and mm, so that like they can hear when uh, it is an air raid in my country, 
but then I decided not to because all the people who organized the project um, from the German side, all the participants, and they were from Romania uh, and from uh, Latvia and Lithuania, all the people felt very compassionate to uh, Ukraine. And they were using these phrases that are very important for us, like Russian war, Russian invasion, uh, Russian war in Ukraine. No, like this half words, you know, like uh, conflicts or uh, something like that. And that was super important for my Ukrainian heart and my Ukrainian ears. And there was also a girl participant from uh, Kherson region. And uh, so I did not like turn on this raid because I don't need to remind these people that war in Ukraine continues and we still need support. Um, but at the same time, um, like um, you feel this normality of the world and how parallel it is that I, I live in a hotel that is next to a park uh, and uh, like there are birds singing lots of birds and I like it. I left a window open for a night so I could hear them early in the morning. And um, I think about Ukrainian birds, like they are totally like the birds, come on, they are innocent and uh, orcs are trying to destroy everything. And of course, it's not about invasion because once again, if they wanted to invade, um, they would not destroy like all the infrastructure and all the stuff. They don't plan to leave. They they just want to eradicate my people. Um, also, once again, if uh, the quality is not good, uh, you have to understand. I'm using uh, this um, hotel uh, internet, and I, I I don't know what the quality of it is. So please forgive me if something irritates you, but just like. Imagine that that's a conversation on a train <laughs> and uh, like it's always, uh, by the way, I will share with you what I have to drink. No, it's not beer. I'm a huge fan of, uh, it's not product placement. I'm a huge fan of um, uh, Coca-Cola Vanilla. We had it once in Ukraine like 15 years ago or something. I fell in love. And then it disappeared. So whenever I see Coca-Cola vanilla, I start drinking it. And I have a couple of Coca-Colas standing uh, next to me. So <clears throat> so another thing, like, oh, what I hated, if you want to know that, like, and it's a good intention. Uh, but, like, when you cross the border uh, with Poland, because I traveled from Lviv to Przemysl, from Przemysl to Berlin, you receive a message from a Polish uh, side. And uh, it is uh, not just like a um, bad message. They want something good. But the message says, um, escaping war in Ukraine, uh, Poland will accept you and so on. Uh, for me, <laughs> greetings to your boyfriend. For me, it was a little bit, I know they don't mean anything bad. But for me, that was a little bit um, negative because, like, I'm not escaping. I'm, I, I felt like I, I want to come back. Like, how do you, I, I don't plan, you know, like, during my lifetime, you realize that lots of opportunities, like, to leave Ukraine even before war. But it was never my intention. And um, I don't like the word uh, to, that is said, like, escaping you can like to ask something different so um, also um there is a feeling like of uh, like germany is a special place where there are lots of uh, places that commemorate um, the victims of the nazi regime and i remember when I was a child, like all of us were brought up uh, on uh, uh, this <clears throat> films about uh, the Second World War. And it was always for me very difficult uh, to comprehend how such evil could exist. Shabana Lake, <laughs> greetings, my friends. 
So uh, it was very difficult for me to comprehend how come like you don't like someone based on the nationality. How come you send people, I don't know, to guest cameras. And now I have it um, in my country. Uh, Russia is a terrorist regime. And uh, many people are killed because they are Ukrainians and Ukrainian nature. And like, I'm not speaking about nuclear power station. At the moment, I don't think something like will happen, but it's very dangerous. And, you know, um, of course, the cattle, the rabbits, all these other beautiful animals that I don't know their names, Chicago and Texas greetings. Please like this video if you like it. <clears throat> uh, so, um, like, it's very difficult because you're walking this normal world the way it should be, uh, with uh, nice shops and uh, tasty food, and then you realize um, that, like, your country... Uh, for me, this dam, it's something, like, um, unbelievable. Think about there are people who... Uh, stay in their houses and at this moment everything is fine for them like everything is fine but they know that the wave <clears throat> is traveling and that and that soon this wave will reach their flats and now think about old people who move slowly who often have lots of cats and dogs that are a part of their family. And think about the depths of the grief, the heart of that person. Like this is, like anyway, your life is coming to an end. This is the moment when you should enjoy safety, happiness, uh, family, and you get the country. And uh, this is like a question. Uh, do you escape? But once again, I saw this, like, a video of one lady, she was able to move, she was quarreling with her dog, because the dog uh, was uh, slow, and she was shouting at it, like, you will uh, drown if you're not moving, but where is she heading to, like, even if they have children, they wanted to live in their village, in their house, sleep in their bed, and it's not just like temporarily, it's, it's below the water. Uh, and the size of this flood is enormous. And it's not flood. It is just hatred and terrorism. And um, I don't know like why people are afraid to really stop Russia because um, deep down inside we understand uh, it's possible. Hmm. So that was what I uh, thought a lot about. Uh, but also uh, we have like to focus on some things the, that were useful. And I'm really once again grateful for this opportunity to be uh, a part of uh, the project. I don't know, I have a message like if you're buying me coffees, I, I don't see that. So thank you very much because somehow my mail on my computer is not working. Thank you that you liked my socks. I was thinking hard about the image, like, and um, how it will look just to be Ukrainian, but not over uh, Ukrainian, because, like, I don't like people who are totally dressed up, but at the same time, like, uh, some elements are important. Um, and, um, also, um, like, um, there are lots and lots and lots of positive people, and uh, I really felt the support. And um, they, I also, there is one story that I want to tell you, and it will sound as if I, like, made this story up, because I did not, like, plan it myself. So today... After the end, uh, thank you so much for buying. Aha, uh -huh, I see. <laughs> thank you so much for buying me coffees. Uh, someone and um, rich and uh, and um, well, I 
um, had some time and I decided to go to Brandenburg tour and I decided to visit some places. And um, of course I got on Unten and Linden uh, street and I will share hopefully some videos if I have like uh, enough time because the program was super intense. And there are lots of uh, messages of support to Ukraine right there and like inscriptions and a flag and I was taking photos it was super sunny and hot so some of these photos won't be top quality but I was doing it really hard and um and a lady came up like oh first I was like fascinated because it was windy and the, the flag got like it's Ukrainian flag and a uh, Crimean Tatar flag and um, because of the wind, it rolled and a man uh, unrolled it, like a German man. He was not Ukrainian. He was walking by and he carefully unrolled it. And I continued taking pictures for me. It was okay. It was not like torn or destructive. It was just like a little bit on the wind. And I was super, uh, like, I felt, oh, I did not hug him because he doesn't know me. He can be, like, afraid of that. But I had this urge. And there was a lady. She saw that I'm doing uh, photos. And um, she asked, like, it's def it's easy to, by the way, we can identify each other to some extent. And um, I asked her, do you want a photo? And she said, yes. And um, while well, after I took her picture and uh, she started crying and she told me that her son um, died heroically near Bakhmut in January. She was in <laughs> something in the hotel room next to me. She was in, uh, she lived near Kiev. Uh, she moved to Germany. At where her daughter lives and her son, who was working in Poland, did the country. He returned from Poland to Ukraine to participate in uh, the protection of Ukraine. And um, he felt like it's his responsibility. Also, he didn't tell her he got married. Uh, they did not have like lots of soldiers get married because they don't know if they have tomorrow and they want like to demonstrate their feelings. And he died in January and she was crying. She was feeling, uh, she, we were speaking about the injustice of this world. I've told her that I lost my mom. And uh, uh, like I, I asked her if she wants a hug and she said, then I won't stop crying. And this like, so what I felt is also uh, that these flags that we were, you were sending me and I was collecting and I felt so like uh, happy on the bus and everywhere when I was seeing them. And, and I have always felt like these are messages to Ukrainians that are passing by, that you think about us, that you feel our pain, that you don't forget about the war. But today I felt a little bit different thing. These are also a, like meeting points because I did see a couple of people who were coming close to uh, the flags, uh, to some installations, and they were looking, they were thinking something. So if you ever like see a sad person next to the Ukrainian flag, uh, go and talk. And I have never spoken about that, but to some extent, we all like fight in normal societies. I hope you don't mind me drinking vanilla cola, but um, uh, and like um, we often speak about equality, and I'm very much into that. And I think that people have to have the right to be whatever they want. And at the same time that we don't have to look from above on some people 
Um, and then you have this feeling like you're Ukrainian and many people with positive things, um, they still have a feeling that you're just like a, a victim. And uh, like, um, that's not what I would like you to feel about me. <clears throat> uh, we are just like <laughs> warriors with problems, I'd say. <laughs> And uh, so that's the feeling. Uh, don't be afraid of Ukrainians. Don't think that Ukrainians are going to uh, speak only about like bad things. We are happy sometimes. We want to eat sometimes. I did buy myself jeans. <laughs> but uh, it's a very like brutal and dramatic combination of our lives. So you see people who are in front lines, uh, they marry and divorce, uh, they uh, plan. I read lots of messages like of, on Facebook and so on, and there are lots of soldiers who promise themselves to travel a lot. They say, well, like, after it all ends. <clears throat> and um, when we win, I uh, believe very much that uh, we will be not that like super traumatized, that's what I want to think about, but that we will be very strong and that we will live in the moment. You know, there are lots of trainings that say you, you have to use all of your opportunities, uh, lots of your <clears throat> dreams, fulfill them, tell people that you love them and all this stuff. I was very close to that actually in my real life. Uh, but now, plus like my story with my mom, there is nothing that I'm shy of. Like, I mean, good things. <laughs> and um, so this is just like, I don't know, reality is real. And there are many things that we get used to or we uh, ignore or what is worse, uh, we postpone uh and that is just like wrong and um because many people are afraid that after the war ukrainians will be super traumatized and like sorry <laughs> will be super traumatized another thing but i want to think of us as of a really successful generation because for example uh that generation after um bye bye rudy generation after war in europe was actually strong and in the us uh they were not like losers and they were very much into building developing that's what i'm trying to uh concentrate on mm. so i see that you're asking lots of like questions uh, as if I'm a dating service, you know, <laughs> and um, uh, so perhaps we can go to some more optimistic and funny uh, questions if you want to know something about my trip to uh, Berlin and some positive impressions. I'm also ready to share that. Uh, <laughs> no, I did not try sauerkraut, but like so, I, I, it's not my first time in Germany. I'm a huge fan of sauerkraut, but you don't have it in summer. Uh, at least I did not notice. And I like it. I like it spicy. I like it sour. That's my style. Also, on the first day, I bought myself a beer and drank it. <laughs> I can do it. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Jägermeister, but um, it's not good, that good for uh, summer. Uh, so I didn't. Uh, can I do a video in Ukrainian with subtitles? Well, I can do, but maybe uh, without uh, subtitles. <laughs> do you want me to translate and type? Uh, uh, Germans culturally different than Ukrainians will like uh, because well, they are different, like all of us are different. Um, let me say what I like, like about Germany. Uh, it is especially like Berlin, maybe it's different from Aza. Uh, 
maybe it's different from other uh, European uh, German cities. Uh, I haven't been to many, uh, but um, they are very uh, diverse. The city is very different. Like you can see different cultures, different languages, but at the same time, everyone is very tolerant. What is really good, uh, all the Germans that I have visited, um, that I have seen, uh, they speak English. Uh, in many countries, like that might be a problem, but here I did not have problems with that. My German is not very strong, but uh, I tried using it, and uh, especially on the streets and the shops, and I was like happy to try that. Also, a funny story, I don't know, I've shared that on Twitter <coughs> and in our community. Greetings to Houston. I don't know how many uh, of you are following that lead. But um, one of the very first things that happened to me when I went out of uh, the railroad, railway station uh, is... Like I saw a military man, he was standing there, and I was first like looking at him if he's wearing like chevrons, if he's. Uh, I have been today to Reichstag, and uh, but not inside, just outside running, and I was um, um, and I was just like checking on him, and then I was smiling because. It's a good Ukrainian tradition that comes very naturally. When you see a military man, you smile, you're happy to see him because like that's a protection that we are super grateful. So for us, it's normal. And all of our army men, they know they can even wave a hand, uh, wave, wave a hand. And, um, and I was doing it all the time. And then I realized that, uh, <laughs> yeah, you see, internet in Germany sucks, people say, like, <laughs> um, <clears throat> and Ukraine at war has normal internet, guys. <laughs> but <clears throat> digital country. Uh, but by the way, let me speak about that too. Uh, like I was uh, constantly like smiling to the soldiers and they were like, <laughs> and then I realized, no, I did not wink, that perhaps I should, um, stop smiling at military men because they can interpret me a little bit uh, different yeah yeah it just comes naturally sister i'm not flirting it comes naturally that's a ukrainian uh thing now also uh, what i have noticed like many of you are asking if uh, if uh, i am No, I don't know the Ness and I don't know why he, for example, Sasha, he cannot go abroad because Ukrainian men are not allowed to go abroad because it's normal during martial law. And um, I have noticed first, you were asking me questions, is Germany expensive? Yes. Like you have uh, this expensive water, for example, uh, when a typical Ukrainian will think, do I really want to drink? <laughs> but like other things are not that expensive. Also, I was like happy because honestly, like a couple, like 10 years ago, I would uh, think that, um, an oven. Uh, I would think like I would shop like crazy because we did not have many things. And uh, now I was like going and I was very relaxed because um, like nothing impressed me that much. There are lots of things that I can find in Ukraine. And um, that is, yeah, I have been to Brandenburg Gay today. <laughs> no, I don't write Harley Davidson, at least at this moment, but you know, maybe one day. And... Um, <clears throat> So it's expensive, but not like fantastically expensive, I would say. Uh, but um, I, I did not have much time for, you know, typically you see things when you do like grocery, uh, 
you can compare these things. Uh, I did not buy many of that. Mm. Uh, then, um, I have also noticed you have this huge receipts, like paper. And, um, like, honestly, uh, we almost don't have receipts in Ukraine. Everything, uh, everything is, uh, like, digital. So this is, like, you get emails or you get them on Telegram channel or Viber or something like that. Uh, so that's what, like, I see that we do have lots of this, like, digital stuff in Ukraine and we've got used to that you can order everything and in the hotel during the check-in like you literally don't need anything to write and you don't need to demonstrate your passport or other that um I did not pay for my hotel room because that's a project so I cannot tell you <laughs> I did not like check that <laughs> yeah Oksana Zabushko is from Lutsk but it was her in her childhood later she lived in Kiev so um the food that i liked uh like i don't know in germany many people are vegans or uh, they like eating various exotic things uh and well like i don't have a telegram channel i have chat for my friends and like but i don't have an open telegram where i inform you on something i don't have telegram but as a person as a private person i do have it <laughs> <clears throat> and I have WhatsApp, but not once again, not for um, spreading my messages. So um, that is uh, like this huge receipt uh, that we are digitized to some extent more. Um, but uh, I liked transport. I always like to go to the underground or something like that. So, yeah, food, lots of, uh, to some extent, exotic food. You, I know <laughs> that, uh, like, when you travel to Europe, there are lots of Asian uh, food, and in Ukraine, we have less of that. Like, all Ukrainians, there is a joke. All Ukrainians uh, have uh, this tradition, like, they love pizza. You will find lots of pizzerias in Ukraine. And uh, also sushi. Sushi? What's the English for that? I don't know. But that's like a lot, lot many people eat it. So some people joke that you, if you want to be successful in restaurant business in Ukraine, open pizza and sushi together. And there are lots of restaurants that actually offer Italian and like Japanese. But we don't have many like uh, kebab or other things uh, that it, it's sushi. Yeah, that's good. That's exactly what we say in Ukrainian. Greetings to those who join and like the videos if you like them. <clears throat> so, uh, but here it's more like you can find it everywhere and uh, some unusual for me combinations. But then we had a couple of uh, dinners with very traditional meat, like stewed with sauces, and that's what I'm like. Please forgive if we have vegetarians, but I'm not. Like, I'm not a, a, a wild meat eater, but I, I do it. <clears throat> um, yeah. Also, I was, like, when I was traveling by railway, I planned to... Um, read a lot because I had a lot of tasks and I was <laughs> surprised that people are very talkative um, on the train and literally was very difficult to <laughs> concentrate but in general I have managed to inform them about my task and I was telling how many subscribers I have and from different countries and I was so proud that you come from different corners of the world but your feeling and compassion to Ukraine unites us. Oh, one thing that I very much liked in Germany, and it's dangerous, uh, like uh, <clears throat> you have good bread. That is actually, like in Ukraine, we know that we have good bread. And uh, many people are like, <clears throat> uh, many people, uh, like Ukrainian, uh, thank you for buying me coffees, Natron. 
Thank you. <laughs> and but I cannot promise you that some of them I won't spend on vanilla Coca Cola. <clears throat> and um, yeah, I like bread and pretzel, and that they are. It's I'm not sure it's pretzel like um, perhaps, and I like that they are salty because. I, I eat a lot of salt and uh, all of that, so yeah. Um, so that was something that uh, I liked. In general, I'd say uh, the food is tasty uh, because, like, I'm spoiled, you know. Ukrainians are spoiled. Our food is tasty. It's it has lots of flavor, uh, so uh, that's why I'm looking for similar things when I'm abroad. For example, I'm a huge potato lover and I was traveling to one country that I'm not going to name, uh, famous with fries, not, not France. And uh, I tried and wow, I was so disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> but I have low blood pressure so I can afford it. Thank you for buying me coffee. Yeah. Um, German coffee did not work well on me. I did not feel like whew, huge uh, energy. I did some cup interviews for Aspen. And no, we don't eat pizza with sushi. We eat either pizza or sushi. <laughs> We're not crazy. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> a question that, that was with a smile. <laughs> did you try it in Belgium and nobody likes that potato? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. There are other things that I like, like chocolate, you know, but <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the other goal of the Aspen project is to activate and to educate festival influencers, how they can, social media content creators, how they can uh, help their followers detect propaganda, but also to think about on the mechanisms how influencers can advise uh, governments and various institutions that are responsible for communication, um, our things that we observe, experience, and so on. Yeah, so that was uh, interesting. <clears throat> and uh, we still have this project, it goes on. We will have a number of online meetings and one more meeting in Prague. It's planned for December, like early December, but already uh, planned like I like this uh, European tradition and I try to copy that so that like um, uh, so uh, that is the best way to like I lost my idea and I continue talking <laughs> thank you Wales for joining I'm really glad that you were with us and uh, I'm, I'm honestly like um, there is one thing that my friends know, and I will try to translate it. And um, yeah, I have a plan. Like in June, I have to be in Vilnius, not because I started traveling that hard. <laughs> oh my God, Sasha is with us. <laughs> Dobry vetir, Sasha. People thought you were traveling with me. Все вирішили, що ти зі мною подорожуєш, а я сказала, що я тебе не взяла. A little bit of Ukrainian. <clears throat> I like Poland and Polish guys because they are part of Poland. <laughs> uh, yeah, so say greetings to Sasha. He will be happy. <laughs> Sasha, still, I still have a task to do. But Sasha, you see, I'm busy. I'm speaking with our people. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Sasha, I'm jealous. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we were talking a lot, but uh, we were not talking about like military tactics over Russia. Uh, we were talking about um, like informational war and disinformation that Russia continues to spread and how it underlines security inside the uh, world how it looks for flaws in your countries because every country has troubles and they try to find these troubles and to shake these troubles 
So um, I find it really useful. Plus, there were people from different platforms uh, speaking about the peculiarities and so on. Yeah, I would love to visit Ireland, but perhaps it's more problematic. I will tell you one more funny thing I remembered. Like, <clears throat> we have visa-free regime, and but still we have borders. And, uh, uh, well, sometimes it takes long, sometimes it takes short. For example, we were afraid we won't make it on um, the train uh, to Berlin from Chemisch. And there were a group of ladies that, like, we were doing crazy things because you have to go customs control and they send you from, thank you for buying me coffee can. Uh, we were, like, they uh, invite people to the customs according to the number of your cabin in a train. And we were in the third one and had less than an hour before a train. And this train attendant told, like, no, you're not making it. I'm a fighter, you know, <laughs> I'm from Ukraine. And mm, so I was trying to uh, rush and we switched to the first cabin. Some people cursed us, but... Um, we had to, and then we went through customs like in one minute, and that was really <clears throat> uh, fast and good. Uh, but uh, typically, when you travel abroad, uh, you need uh, an insurance, like you buy, so you can travel with that insurance. Thank you, Ed, for a coffee, and <laughs> cheers with my vanilla cola. And I was like uh, trying to buy insurance i was asking my friends who travel abroad and they told me like you don't need insurance um like ukrainians don't need insurance anymore because like all the ukrainians are in great trouble and if they need something abroad they will get it <laughs> so uh <clears throat> i don't have orc insurance none of the ukrainian uh have this um insurance from orc and it's actually sad because no matter how smart you are, talented you are, I'm not speaking about myself. Oh, I have read uh, if, like a story of one Ukrainian writer who's pretty successful and he was saying that, okay, I'm popular, I write well, I look good, but for a Russian soldier, I'm just like a sack with bones. And that's true. And that's tragic. That's something that should never happen if we are people. <clears throat> but, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> You enjoy conversations with me, but like if I meet a Russian soldier, he will not speak with me. And this is the reality. This level of hatred, this level of uh, things, this is a tragedy. Super chats don't work for Ukraine, and I don't want to uh, trick YouTube that I am in the US or elsewhere, because first of all, I'm in Ukraine, and I think it's important for my new followers to know that I'm in Ukraine, so I'm in Berlin today, but soon I will be back home. And uh, like, we have to be, YouTube gave me excellent opportunity to find you in my life and you are a great support. And at the same time, <clears throat> yeah, hit the button so that I get a thousand likes. That would be awesome. And uh, that's why I'm grateful to YouTube and I don't want to play with that, so. <clears throat> Thank you so much for good luck and I hope that soon uh, we will see more changes on the front lines and they will be more successful. And But this war is for long. I did not see Russians, uh, lucky Russians, that I did not see them in Berlin because I would definitely like, you know, there are keep people who keep low profile, but that's not about me. Uh, I'm just like, I would definitely say something and uh, they, they are like more silent um, in abroad. And there are lots of, I wanted to say a bad word, there are lots of Russians who pretend that they support uh, Ukraine and uh, that they, or they are Ukrainians, Russian speaking Ukrainians. There are lots of Russians who used, especially at the beginning of uh, the war, uh, yeah, thank you. Like Kennedy once said, I'm like, I'm a Berliner. Thank you to those who feel that you are Ukrainian. And um, so, uh, like, they use war, some of Russians use war uh, to 
immigrate and to pretend that they are just like supporters of Ukraine and they are persecuted in Russia. But then when you talk with them, you realize um, that is just like their reality. <clears throat> So maybe a couple of more questions and I will let you go. And tomorrow is the traveling day for me, but hopefully I will record a video in the morning. So this will be a morning video. Yeah, I just like when I receive some positive comments from Russians, I typically ignore them. Did I have fun? Yes as much as a Ukrainian can have fun. <laughs> Students are fine looking for vacations. Uh, like they still have exam season and I have exam with them. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I've noticed a lot of Ukrainians and uh, even like when I was, uh, meeting some people in the shop who asks me where I'm from uh, and um, <laughs> nice question that I need to answer um, they were like saying are you living now in here because for the majority of people when they uh, meet Ukrainian they think that uh, like you <clears throat> uh, you relocated here but I'm not and for me it was important uh, to greetings to Hungary. Uh, for me, it was important to tell them no, I'm living in Ukraine and I'm not changing it. I do understand those people who had to relocate, but from the other point of view, it was important for me to demonstrate that like people are living and working in Ukraine and doing something useful for Ukraine. So I'm uh, important for that. <clears throat> Uh, no, yeah, invite me to a German TV show, I will come again. <laughs> I liked Berlin. Previously, I did not like it. I was somewhere in autumn and it was very dark and sad and very much like lots of the excursions and stuff. And it was all about Stasi. And when you watch Stasi museums, Stasi stories, I do know that I'm like against communist propaganda, but that was <laughs> too much. And this time it was good. I haven't been to Amsterdam. And actually, you gave me this idea. I'm sorry. It's not just like a lamp was out. Uh, so <clears throat> I thought like um, it might be interesting to think about some meeting with you maybe this summer. Perhaps it's running out of the charger. I have this like, <laughs> you will think that wherever we are, uh, it is always the, the lights go out because the Ukrainian is in, like Ukrainian is in, so the lights are out. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that was just like um, an idea that maybe uh, we can uh, meet somewhere in the end of this summer uh, on this neutral for you territory. And but just like some of you might be interested, but I still uh, haven't made up like this idea or where can it be? But uh, that might be, <laughs> yeah, if you have to look good in the dark, you know, it's important. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I have a illness in the end of uh, June very brief trip just two days or something and a proc in december maybe something in between but uh once again these are never vacations because some of you kind people were inviting me for a vacation or something um this is of course it works like a change of the scenery and a bit of a vacation but all of my trips are it's connected with some kind of tasks that i have to <coughs> fulfill uh, like like projects, Vilnius is for a digitization project that we run. And by the way, some of the objects that we wanted to digitize are very likely under the water now in Kherson Oblast because there is a Vitalta's tower 
in in there between Kherson and um, in Kherson region actually, and so uh, that is uh, one more example how it all happens. We don't think about that, but it's all around us. Yes, yeah, so a European tour. I it does not look serious. Like I don't have. If I had one thousand one hundred thousand subscribers, then I would like look. <clears throat> Uh, serious. Do you see Operator Starsky here? Because like if he's here, then of course greetings to him, but because you're mentioning his name and <clears> how. <throat> ah. So uh, this is interesting and I do enjoy these travels, but they are always combined with some mission. Of course, if you have an idea uh, of something important that uh, may be used and somehow <clears throat> Uh, connected to what I do because I feel like my responsibility to represent my country and I'm so grateful that I have uh, your community, your friendship and your attention and that's why let's think on some of these projects if you have ideas uh, you can send me <clears throat> you know there is my email also I traditionally uh, invite you to follow my um, <clears throat> Instagram uh, to uh, because I share slightly different things on Instagram, uh, some maybe less serious uh, content, or for example, my updates on my Berlin trips, um, also Twitter, and of course, Discord community that is a very beautiful community with its dictator, Martin. I don't know if Martin is with us, but <clears throat> he's really awesome there. Uh, so, I don't know, <clears throat> ah, one thing that I will finish my today's life with is that I often told my very close people, uh, those who are like really close, not my colleagues or acquaintance, but my, my friends or those people whom I love, I would describe it like I would say, like typically you love a person and then I would say that I have a tide of love tied like those that are British people must know that like with the sea or something like <laughs> and it does not mean <laughs> that um, a seagull Greek dictator another dictator dictators multiply you know like Lukashenko and Putin I'm sorry <laughs> but um, don't get angry at me Martin it's just like dark humor and lots of sugar in my blood uh, a wave of love, like wave is shorter, tide is longer. And I would say like I, this in, in Ukrainian, it sounds like good. Like you have tides of love and some people will ask you like, don't you love me that you say that you have this style of love? No, it's just like when you are overwhelmed once again with this feeling. And I have to tell you that when I was speaking for my country, when I was speaking for my about my channel and other things, um, I uh, uh, felt like it's all because of you, because I have you, because you have come to my life, you have come to my uh, channel, uh, you have come, thank you so much for buying me coffees, Robert, you have uh, like created this community and um, I had this like tides of love, like I was feeling, oh my God, <laughs> uh, and I'm really grateful to have you in my life I honestly value that uh, please always let me know what are the things that you would like to know about Ukraine some updates um, and um, soon I will be home and you will recognize our traditional <laughs> background thank you once again for buying me coffees being my patrons being friends caring about Ukraine listening to all the stories that I'm sharing with you because it's very important. Thank you for uh, Spencer and Martin and an extra hug to Martin and many of your friends whom I recognize, your names, uh, your countries, your oblasts. And I'm really honored uh, with that. Should I go downstairs and buy a bottle of beer or not? <laughs> Let's vote because I have these coins of euros, you know, you don't need that. Uh, in Ukraine, you cannot do anything with them. So <laughs> give me an idea. 
should I do that or not? Uh, yes, I'm a Cossack, of course. Um, yes, yes, yes to be. <laughs> okay, no. Like, okay, really drink German beer is good. Like, okay, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me. Um, many, many hugs to uh, you beautiful people. And I value greatly your presence in life. And uh, looking forward to more live streams. Slava Ukraine, Jakub.